place. I never liked this song much, but I'm going to show you a little technique. And I think to do it, in order to do it, you're going to need about a week of practice before we actually apply it. So having a shorter class today to give you this assignment is going to be good. Thanks for blueberries, by the way. I love blueberries. Okay. What is an arpeggio? <laughs> okay. Have you heard the term triad? Tri meaning three, add meaning notes together. Three notes added together. A triad is a chord. That's all. When I was taking piano lessons, my teacher never called it a chord. She called them triads and arpeggios. So if you're watching the video and you've had a very strict piano upbringing, you probably wouldn't relate the word chord to the word triad. Okay, but that's what it means. So tri means three. Now remember way back lesson one, cheaty chords? He taught you that a major chord is 43. Play the note, four half steps is the next note, three half steps up, and 34 is a minor chord. So 43 is this. C, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Okay, this is the nucleus for triad. That's all it is. If I want to play an A, a triad, it's A, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. That's an A chord. Okay, A minor is A, it's 34. One, two, three, one, two, three, four. In other words, take the triad, flat the middle note, and you make a major chord a minor chord. A triad is always in the root position. Root meaning the name of the chord is on the bottom. Okay? So there's G, there's F. Now, I, I, an arpeggio is three chords and a ding. That's, well, I made it up. <laughs> it's C, E, G with the left hand. C, E, G with the right hand. C, E, G with the left hand over. And a ding with the right hand. Okay? So if you're playing on a piano, and this is mostly a piano exercise, you would just put on the piano sound on the bottom keyboard. See, and you go 
all the way up, and then once you get to the top, you go all the way back down. Okay, that is your assignment for the week. I want you to learn to play those triads. Okay, because I'm going to teach you the coolest thing to do with them. But I can't teach you what to do with them till you actually have done it, till you, till you know where they are. And you, you're never going to play an F sharp or an E flat, but you might as well learn them while you're doing it. If you don't want to do the black keys, just, use, just do the white keys. C, D, E, F, G, A, B flat. Don't do B. And C. Okay? All right. Now, when you, to apply the, what we're going to do, can you, do you ever, are you ever, do you ever play and you, and you hear, you go, wow, I can put something right there and I just don't know what it is. See, all the workshops and all the classes I've ever done and gone to, I get all these ideas from people and they go, whoa, you can do this and this and this. Then I get home and I go, okay, I can do the exercise. I don't have a clue where to put it in a song. So, or vice versa. They'll give you something to do in a song and never give you any foundation as to why, why you're doing it, which would allow you to do it in another song. I could do it in that song. For example, I learned I'll Take Manhattan, and I learned two note sevens, so like this. Okay? I'm going to go 
C, T, G. Now, to start, you, you maybe want to make that two measures of each chord. One, two, three. One, two, three.
Okay, here's what I'm doing. I'm just taking the chord and I'm just walking around in it, okay? Mm-hmm. 